Hey, Successors, before we get into the show today, I'd like to tell you about my new book, Indulge Your Affirmative Motivation Within, 25 Motivations of Personal Development and Life Success. If you're struggling to stay motivated or just need a little boost, check out the ways that I've stayed motivated over the last few years. Go ahead and go over to Amazon.com and grab yourself a copy. That's Indulge Your Affirmative Motivation Within, 25 Motivations of Personal Development and Life Success. Get it now. On with the show. Success. Media. Network. Network. Network, 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 network. This is your show. Good day, successors. I'm Antonio Holman, and welcome to the Four Principles of Success, number 56, where I chat with successful people and entrepreneurs about how they enhance their businesses and lives in the areas of knowledge, health, wealth, and spirituality. And if you want to learn how I've stayed motivated throughout the years, check out my new book, Indulge Your Affirmative Motivation Within, 25 Motivations of Personal Development and Life Success, now on Amazon. Today, we're talking to Brian Falchuk. Brian is located in Boston, Massachusetts, is a certified personal trainer, behavior change specialist, and has a very inspiring story. He went from being obese and depressed to running marathons, contributing to Inc. Magazine, and authoring the best-selling book called Do A Day. Throughout his life challenges, Brian faced nearly losing his wife to illness while their young son watched, became a vegan, and just one day got his master's degree from a top school, then rose to a senior executive position in a successful business. As you can see, Brian transformed his life and has developed an approach and philosophies to help others do the same, which is what we'll be talking about today. Brian, are you ready to help our listeners prepare for success? I'm ready, Antonio. Let's do this. All right, Brian. So aside from your very busy business world, tell us a little bit about your personal life. Yeah. So I'm, uh, you know, you, you hit on a lot of the key things that I'm a husband and a father and that's, um, you know, that that's the grounding of my personal life is that frames what I do. Um, I mean, that frames my professional life too, is it's gotta be in support of my most important role, which is as this cool little dude's father and, uh, you know, as, as a husband to his mom. Um, so that means I have been on this journey as has my wife since, you know, her medical issue, uh, medical scare back in 2011, just to really remake our lives. And we've turned it outside now and we're both in, in different ways, but we're both focusing on how we can take what we've learned through these challenges to inspire others. And that's, I mean, um, you know, when I'm not in my core job and maybe even a little bit when I am. I'm really just focused on, you know, how can I help someone get over the situation that they're facing and start to move forward? Because we're all like, I don't care what your background is, what your life situation is. We are all in the midst of some kind of struggle. And that can either either be what takes us down or it can be what propels us ahead. And that's, you know, as, as crazy it may sound to some people, that's a choice. And we have the power to make it that choice. Absolutely. There are tons of people who they, they just have not gotten to the point to where they believe that. And it is so powerful. And it's happened for me personally as well. Yeah. And some people are even offended by it. You yes. Know, it's like, what, I can choose this. I'm not, and it's like, it, you know. No disrespect to the situation you're in. It may not be your own doing, but, you know, one thing I remind people is just because you're not the source of the problem doesn't mean you can't be the source of the solution. Absolutely. Absolutely. For those who may not know, tell us a little bit more about your practice as a behavior change specialist. Yeah, so that is very much tied into the whole purpose of my book. So that's, um, you know, I got certified as a personal trainer, not really to go into the gym with people and pump iron. You know, I know how to do that, but that's not my focus. Um, and building off of that, you know, my purpose was to help people overcome their health struggles. And my background is being an obese kid. And then, um, you know, while I lost weight, as does almost everybody who loses weight, I gained a lot of it back. And so I've been through that struggle a couple of times and understood why it's successful and why it isn't. So I, you know, a lot of people would see me losing weight and being fit and active and all that. And they'd ask me for help. So that's when I got certified. I was like, I can do more with this. But through that, I really started to recognize I'm not going to have any success bringing health to someone's life if there's all kinds of other dysfunction and lack of motivation and all that going on for them. And it was through that realization that I was like, I need to do more. And it's not just on this fitness side. It's the whole picture of their behavior, what drives it, what, you know, what fuels your life 
because that's my story. You know, I didn't I didn't get fit and stay fit by just working out and eating better. I those are really like positive byproducts of changing my mentality, changing the way that I approach things, the way I deal with things, the way I look at my motivation. And for me, it was forced upon me through, through when I, you know, in 2011, it was pretty certain my wife wasn't going to make it through the summer and thank God she did. But, you know, I was preparing for suddenly being a single dad and being miserable in pretty much every aspect of my life, other than my role as a father and husband. And, uh, you know, you don't usually think about losing your spouse in your early thirties as you're starting a family. Maybe that comes in your eighties or something. Um, so, you know, it was just all thrust upon me, but I realized so much through that. I'm like, I need to broaden this out. And that's where I got certified as a behavior change specialist. And that's what I do in my coaching work now. And for some people, they'll come to me about their fitness for others. It's career stuff. Since my book came out, it's mostly been people who are really unhappy in their professional side. Um, or, you know, maybe they don't even have one and that's part of the problem is they, they just haven't been able to find success at all. Um, but one thing that's really clear to me is you don't just help someone get a better job. You don't just help them lose weight. You have to look at the whole picture. And that's, that's what I focus on in my practice. Now in, in your intro, we talked about, uh, I, I spoke about how you went vegan in just one day, which is interesting because I've, I've been vegan for years. And basically, I did the same thing in one day. I mean, once you realize certain health aspects of yourself personally, the writing's on the wall, and I just got tired of ignoring the the proof that was around me. So I was like, okay, fine, that's it. So how did that play a role in you changing your lifestyle and your fitness going vegan? Yeah, so that's that's an interesting point. And I was there, but couldn't get past a number of different things that I, I took as pressure. And I think like, I've never, literally never in my life took any, taken a single drag off a cigarette. So I'm not a smoker, but I think this is probably a similar thing to what most smokers go through as they're trying to quit. It's not news, you know, it's not healthy for you. It's killing you and those around you. So like, that's, that's known. You know, you watch what the health or you, you get into the space, you know, like, look, this stuff, you can be a lot healthier if you're vegan. Uh, you know, and you have to do it right, but you can be much healthier. Uh, so I had all that information and that wasn't enough for me to, to get through the troubles. And this is what hit me in the one day aspect of it. And this is actually where my book and my philosophy got a name, do a day. So for me, it's like, you know, I knew it was better for me. I had run, read a bunch of books by vegan ultra athletes. I was reading one by this amazing guy named Rich Roll. Um, And it just hit me as I'm reading that, you know, he's just sort of like calling it out. He's not putting you down, but he's like, why haven't you tried it? You know, if you haven't done it, why haven't you? You don't really have an excuse. And I was like, yeah, but you know, I travel for work. And what about those business dinners where we're at a steak place and I didn't get to choose where we're going. And it's like, do I just sit there not eating? And what about, you know, I'm driving through the middle of nowhere in like, I don't know, Iowa or something. And the only place to eat is a gas station. What am I supposed to do there? And what about my son's birthday when he wants me to have a piece of cake with him? You know, you'd be like, oh, no, daddy doesn't eat things like that. Like, that's bad for you. You know, and I just started painting all these what ifs. And it just hit me as like, none of those things is happening right now. Like, why am I basing whether I ever do this off of things that may or may not happen tomorrow or tomorrow being, you know, three, five months out? And then I, I literally just said out, de- out loud, I was like, I can do a day. So that was like 830 at night. I just woke up the next morning. I'm like, you know, what? I'll do it today. And I went to work. I usually have a salad at lunch anyway, so that wasn't hard. You know, I had fruit for snack. Like, it just was all really easy. And it hit me when I got home. I was like, that was the easiest eating day I've had. I didn't have to scrutinize. I was on a slow-carb diet before, and it's all scrutiny of like, oh, you know, you can't eat a carrot because that's got too much sugar, and you can't eat fruit. And you have to go through all the ingredients to see if there's anything in there. Whereas, like, like you can tell if there's a hunk of steak in your food. It's pretty obvious. Some stuff's trickier. You don't know if there's like butter in it or whatever, but generally it just was so much easier. And, um, so at the end of that day, I was like, that was simple. I had all this pressure on it, on myself about it. And it was for no reason at all. So I'll do another day. And that's three years almost now of just doing a day. And you know what? I haven't been a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time. I've been a hundred percent, like 99% of the time because of those situations, like my son's birthday, where it's like, you know what? I'm going to have a piece of cake with him. Or we went to Disney World and I may have had a waffle that had ears on it, you know. But I don't let that derail everything. And that's that's the other key part of, of the whole do-a-day approach is 
you don't punish yourself in perpetuity and you don't throw away all the progress you've made and all the betterment you can still make because you made one choice that maybe you wish you didn't make. Or maybe you made for a specific reason but didn't tie into your bigger picture. You can course correct and do better the next time. So I had that waffle. You know what? Next meal, I didn't have anything that wasn't vegan and I've been fine. You know, I don't, I didn't just be like, oh, I ruined everything. So now I'm going to go back to eating like, you know, McDonald's and cheeseburgers and, you know, whatever. Like, I guess that's the same thing. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, I, I didn't just throw it away. And that's the key is like, yeah, we all mess up. Are you going to sit here and beat yourself up for the rest of your life? And are you going to make the wrong choices because of all these what ifs that may or may not lie ahead? Or are you just going to do better right now? And what you find when you make that choice is every day that you do better and every day you move further along the path towards your goal, you find yourself more empowered and more driven. And I always say to people, success begets success. Like the more you win, the more you win. And so you just get on that train and you keep the good going. And when you have a misstep, you step right back on the path and all is good. And that's the way I live my life. And that's why it's like talking about being a vegan, running a marathon, dealing with issues as a parent, as a spouse, uh, an employee, a boss. Like, I don't care what the aspect of your life is. I know from my own experience and the people I've worked with and people have reached out to me through the book, when you take this approach, it really can apply across your entire life, no matter what you face. Now, this kind of ties in with uh, your last answer about your book, Do or Day. When you were writing it, what was that inspiration? I mean, um, what was that target audience you were writing that book for as you were writing it? Who were you imagining in your mind? Yeah, I think that's that's a really key question because it does apply really broadly, and it's a bad answer to say, well, it's for everyone, because it's not. And I think that it's maybe it's easier to answer who it isn't for. And that's people who aren't ready for the journey. And you may not understand that about yourself yet, but it takes someone who's, who's feeling stuck and is ready for facing that and realizes it's going to be work on themselves. The book's not long. I don't want you to spend you know days and days reading my work. I want you to spend a little time getting the inspiration, knowing the questions to push yourself on, and then spend the time with yourself and really dig in deeper. So I say it's for people typically... You know, maybe like mid to late twenties. Who, you know, a lot of people they come out of college, they get a job, and then they wake up three years later, four years later, and like, wait, how did I end up in this? Or it's like, I need to go back to school. I'm feeling totally different about my life. So maybe it's someone who's at that that pivot point where something is, it's just not fitting in their life anymore. Or they've had that realization, like this is what's going on for me, and I'm not, you know, I'm not on side with this. Like this doesn't feel right. All the way up to people who are, you know, I'm I'm coaching a guy who's in his fifties mid to late fifties who, um, found himself pushed out of a company he had been at for 30 plus years. And he got in there so young, like he really never stopped to understand who he is and why he is and what he's about and what drives him. So for him to find his next job, he just, he didn't even know how to go about that. He's just like, I need to work. You know, we got to find me a job. And I was like, we'll find you a job, but it's going to be the right job. And you don't even know how to define that yet. I was like, what do you want to do? And he couldn't answer the question. So through the process, you know, we bring out like what actually is going on inside of you that you've never stopped to get in touch with. And that that can include some tough stuff, you know, some childhood trauma, some difficulties in relationships, whatever it is. If you don't work through that and figure out what drives you, you're not really going to get on that path. Now, you're you're really into helping people change their lives. Now, when when people decide to make big life changes for the better. They're going to need some type of, you know, mindset. What do you feel are the three key mindsets that people need before, you know, venturing on to a life change? I love that question because that's that's where I start every time. And there's a, a the one thing that's the most foundational that literally nothing else is going to work if you don't get this. And that's just self-love, self-compassion. I don't care if it sounds corny or whatever. Is a fact. If you're stuck on why you don't deserve or why you're not good enough or why you can't, then all those things are going to stay true. You have to allow, as the, the absolute starting point, your mindset has to allow for the possibility that you can do well, the possibility that you deserve to do well. And so that's point number one. You got to get over the negative talk and the framing yourself as something that can't do better. So that's, that's number one. Number two is 
and this is something I really push in in the book on, is figuring out what your motivation is. And that's a mindset focused on self-discovery and challenge. So you, you need to get in touch with what really drives you. And I, I have a bunch of questions that I pose in the book to people. And if I sum it all up into one, it's kind of, what are you always going to care about no matter what? And you, with a little thought, you'll come up with an answer. And what I would push you on is, you know, take a, a really inquisitive approach. Ask yourself why. You know, you say it's because of this. Well, why is it that? And, you know, be annoying. This is actually what I do as a coach is I just get really annoying and I just keep asking why. But you probably haven't gotten down to that real deep level that's actually driving you. You're operating at the surface if you don't probe and, and get really curious with yourself. So the first is self-love. The second is motivation with that curiosity to really, really pick apart what's going on there. And then the last is have a mindset of goals and success. Pick the things that you really want to tackle and give yourself some real goals, not impossible goals, but not, you know, if, if you're 40 pounds overweight, don't set a goal of losing five pounds. Set a goal of losing four, 40 pounds. And you can have your five pound markers in between so you know if you're on the right path, but get the goal that's going to push you and actually is about changing your situation in the way you want. You know, the, not just a little bit of progress towards it, but what is it you actually want to get to? If you're trying to change your financial situation by building up your savings, maybe you're someone who's always been in debt. Don't say if you're 10 grand in debt, I'm going to be nine grand in debt. That's a step on the path. Say I want to have fifty thousand dollars in cat, you know, in, in my savings account in the bank, what, whatever, wherever you keep it by this date, you know. And it can't be in poly, it can't be tomorrow unless you you, know, you got a windfall of cash coming in. It's got to be something that's possible. But then you need to alter your behavior on a daily basis and do a day. Every day you need to make the right choices to start to take that debt down and build up that 50 grand or whatever the number is. So the, the third one is really an eye on success and build those goals around getting to that place you are trying to be at. Love this information. Valuable. Extremely valuable. Um, as we know, life's full of ups and downs and nothing's ever just perfect all the time. So throughout your journey, what was that time when you felt most unsuccessful in your life? Yeah, that's a that's a good point. And I talk about that in the book because people, you know, someone asked me, like, what's the surprising thing about you? It's like, it's not all roses. I absolutely have tough days. Um, you know, I'm, I'm tired. I, I'm working like crazy. I travel a lot. I've got the book going on. Like, I, I'm, I've got I've got tough days. It's not all good. But I also had failures along the way, even, you know, once I had changed my mindset and once I got on the right path, I had two jobs that didn't work out. And one of them was one I expected to be at for the rest of my career. And it's not that it ended. I'm fine with that. It's the way it ended. I eventually threw up my hands and just said, guys, this is ridiculous. I need to go because they, you know, there really wasn't a place for me anymore. There have been structural changes and they didn't really want to admit that. Because then you got to pay severance, you know. So they just make things uncomfortable, and just in hopes that you just kind of leave quietly. Um, and that really wasn't in the cards for me, because you know I mentioned I had my wife's health issues, so I had some pretty big bills. I couldn't just walk away from a job. I needed to have something in place. Um, so I was kind of stuck, and that and that was a very difficult time. It was drawn out. It was about a year long process. And I'd keep saying, you know, it feels like this isn't working out. No, 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 we need you. You know, there's just a lot of back and forth and confusion. That was really difficult. Um, it took some time to get through that afterward. Because when I actually, I just, uh, just like right around, I don't know quite when this is going to come out, but in, let's say in uh, late October, one of my Inc. articles will post that's all about being honest in your career and, and when, um, if you have employees, when it's not working out or, you know, if, if you don't need them anymore, even if they're great, you have to be upfront and honest about it because the, the cost of not doing that is massive all around for everyone. You know, I know those conversations are difficult, but it's much worse if you don't have them than if you do. So, you know, you, you, you play with someone's head when they leave, they leave with all kinds of self doubt, and questions about their capabilities and, and all you know all that when we go back to that first mindset of self love, what you've done is you've just picked away at all that and you've given them all these reasons why they shouldn't believe in themselves. Just because they they weren't good for you doesn't mean they're not good. 
maybe they're not in the right role. And maybe that's something they need to discover, but you don't have to break their spirit in the process. So, you know, I, I had to go through that journey myself and, and rebuild myself and understand, you know, what did I do in this? Why, why did these things happen? And what could I have done differently? And that's, you know, that's a growth journey that I'm glad I had. I feel like we could have gotten there without having to play games. You know, I'm, I'm a big fan of honesty, even when it's tough. Um, so that was, you know, that was a pretty big smash to me that, you know, that was like, that's what I thought I'd be doing for the rest of my time. And looking back on it, it's fantastic that it ended because I've gone on to much bigger and better things. And I am in a place right now that fits so much better than that ever would have. But of course, you don't, you don't get that in the moment. You know, you feel the pain and the loss. So that was a you know pretty big painful thing for me that had been a big part of my identity, um, and it fell apart, you know. And so there's a lot to deal with from that, but I did. What was your most challenging client related situation, and how did you resolve it? I think that um, there's one who wasn't wasn't really interested in it to begin with, and so he always came with a real attitude. And he really just wanted to challenge me, which I don't mind the challenge. But if you're going to give me challenge, I, I want you and me to grow from the back and forth. And he was challenging just for the sake of challenging. And he really wasn't paying attention. You know, I could tell he was on his phone or, or doing whatever instead of uh, engaging in the conversation. So that that was frustrating for me. And I actually have one of our interchanges in the book. Um where we're talking about fitness and, and uh, trying to push him on his motivation. And for me, you know, a big part of it is just being honest. And where it came down to was I, I ultimately had to have a conversation with him about his honesty and who he's doing this for. I see, you know, when, when I ask you a question, you give me an answer that is clearly not the real, real answer. And I know you know that. Who are you lying to? Because I don't care. You know, if you tell me, you know, if I ask you a question, the answer is four and you tell me it's three, does it actually make a difference to me? I'm giving you the hour either way on the phone or, you know, Skype or in person or whatever. So I don't, it doesn't actually impact my life one way or the other if you're not truthful. The person who's impacted is you because you're not going to get out of this relationship what you sought to get out of it when you signed up. So, you know, if you want to waste both of our time, that's fine. But just understand, you're costing yourself. You don't owe me an answer on anything. You owe yourself, and I think you know inside that you're lying. I think you know inside that you're not facing what you need to face. And, you know, he disagreed with all that. And that was our last meeting for a while, until he came back three months later to apologize. And he said, you were right. You know, I really, I was not in a place where I could be honest, and you were the outside embodiment of that dishonesty with myself. And, you know, he was sorry, and I was, I, I'm not offended by it. I don't, you know, I, I'm not moved negatively by what happened. I was just really thankful that he had come around to understand, like, it's not me. I don't, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm, I'm just a person he's sounding off to. It's what he's doing with himself. And ultimately, I want him to change for himself. I can't change him. So if that's through my hand or on his own or whatever, if he's moving on that journey, fantastic. So, you know, sometimes you have to call that out. And I'm glad that he finally came around. He's seen it. I, I hear he's doing better now. He checks in every now and then. Um, and he's making progress toward his goals. But he really had a block there. And you see that. Some people just aren't ready for it. Because it is a tough internal journey you have to go on. It has nothing to do with the coach you're working with. I mean, that you know, that's whether they're good enough. But it's not. you're not changing for them. If you are, it's not right. What do you feel was the one hardest thing in your business to overcome that you've since conquered? Um, I can't say that I fully conquer this at all, but it is, uh, it's how do you break through all of the chatter out there so that your message resonates? And I've had a lot more success than I thought I might. Um, but I, you know, I, I want more, not because I want to sell a bajillion books and make all this money. The reason I wrote my book is because if I coach 24 seven, I still can't help enough people. I just, I like, I absolutely love watching people grab hold of what's going on in their situation and completely transform their life. So, you know, I've, I've sold way more books than I ever thought I would. I hit the bestseller list when it came out on Amazon, like all that stuff. 
you, you go through these ups and downs and you put out a book, maybe you've been through the same thing where it's like, you go from, Oh my God, is anyone, even my mother going to buy this thing to like, what if I sell millions of copies and I'm sitting on the couch across from Oprah in the middle of the woods on her show? <laughs> yeah. You, know, yeah. you go these ups and downs and, and, I mean, my poor family, the emails I sent them the night before came out, like reminding them, like, you have to buy it this way at this time. And, um, cause I was like, I'll sell like six copies and it's going to be, you know, my three siblings and my parents and like, you know, someone's friend, um, or me, like my wife will buy it or something. Um, so yeah, I, I definitely had way more success in the launch than my fears would have set me up for. But I, I, I want more because I want the message to be getting out. And that's where opportunities like, you know, speaking on your show have been huge. Um, getting on, to write for Inc., that's something that I never would have seen coming. And what I realized is, you know, I'm not writing. Well, I am now, but at the time I wasn't writing for them. So what do I have to lose? I might as well pitch myself. And I wrote a, a sample article for them and I told my story and why I think it would be good for their writer, their readers. And, you know, it's just... I think I would have been too afraid in the past and been like, well, who am I? Why do I get to do that? And so, you know what? I have every bit as much right as anybody else. I might as well try. And if they don't want me, fine, then they don't want me. But I'm not writing for them now, so I literally have nothing to lose. There's nothing on the line. So I've taken a number of shots like that, and they've worked out. So, you know, I'm writing for Inc., and my articles are doing well. Um, I just had one of the editors thank me for something that I submitted for review. She's like, that's the best thing I read today. It really got me going. It's like, that's awesome. Like, that's the reason I'm doing all this is that feedback and knowing that I'm impacting people. And I just got confirmed to do a Ted talk in March and I'm shortlisted for two others where I'm a finalist. So, you know, it's all, it's all moving in the right direction. Um, but I am hungry for more because I want to know that I'm reaching even more people. That's mm. what drives me. Yeah. I love that. What do you feel is your one biggest business triumph to date? Um, well, I personally, it's putting out the book because that's, you know, I can look at anyone like writing for Inc. has been huge. I love, um, I love that I get to do a TED talk. That was, I had to do a vision board a while ago for a coach that I work with. And I, I plastered myself on top of a guy from a picture of a TED talk. So I'm like, you know, visioning myself on, on stage doing a TED talk. So it's TEDx. It's not quite the, the big show, but it's getting there. Um, but it all, you know, what's the catalyst is the book. And for me, um, you know, I didn't do well in high school in English class. I was like a C student in English. Um, so to even think that I could write a book is pretty mind blowing, but I did and it's resonating. So, you know, all of it started with a book. So if I were to call anything out, it's, it's publishing my book. What do you feel is your one biggest personal triumph today? Oh, um, I would have said the marathon, but I think it's a lot simpler than that. I think it's just being a runner, which is like, you know, I was morbidly obese as a kid and I hated running. Um, so that much like putting the book out, like there's bigger things I've done since the book came out and I've done bigger things than, than just running. But, um, there's something in being such a completely different situation from who I was in the first half of my life. And it's a really basic and pure like symbol of that. Um, so that's a, that's something I personally find so much pride in is the fact that I get out there and run. Um, so yeah, it's, there, there's like, it's about the emotional and the, like the personal and self, uh, self-compassion story behind that. It's not about the actual, like any major achievement. That's why I don't call out a race or anything. Just the fact that I do it like that's huge to me because it's not, it has nothing to do with who I was. And I love that about it. Hang tight successors. We'll return to our conversation with Brian Falchuk as well as quick success after a word from our sponsors. Podcasters want more listeners. Check out promosharecast.com and join the community today. That's promosharecast.com. Join today and get the first month free, and you'll also receive 50% off for a lifetime membership. Sign up today. Promosharecast.com. Are you a tense, tired, busy person who works day in and day out who tends to lack the proper sleep and energy? 
Using modular supplements, health-related articles, recipes, life hacks, and more, Bellison can help. With quality as high as Bellison, you're buying from a company that cares about the environment and only uses premium vegan supplements. That's Bellison.com. Want to learn how to cook healthy, exercise, and meditate in just 30 minutes a day? Bellison.com. Want to feel healthy, energetic, and focused like me? Bellison.com. To receive a 10% discount at checkout... Whoa, hold on. Now, receive even more health benefits with a 20% discount at checkout. Go to Bellison.com with the coupon code THE4POS to get your 20% off now. Visit Bellison.com. That's B-E-L-I-S-A-N.com. Compassion and quality without compromise. Bellison.com. Are you tired of trying every new diet fad? Sick of the pills, shakes, and vibrating belts? Are you just sick and tired of being sick and tired? Linda Lavender knows exactly how you feel. That's why she created Eat to Live to Love. Eat to Live to Love is a personalized mentoring program 100% unique to you. With 24-7 support, learn to shop smart, save money, eat clean, and find your purpose using the tools and resources you need to achieve real weight loss and transformative healing without ever having to buy another gimmicky fat-sucking wrap or magic protein shake. Eat to Live to Love has been the driving force behind people across the United States to not only change their lives, but to actually take back control. Find out how health coach Linda Lavender can help you become your own hero and transform your life at eattolivetolove.com or call 1-888-440-9795 for a free initial consultation. Stop just dreaming about success and make it happen with Eat to Live to Love. Visit eattolivetolove.com now. That's eat, the number two, live, the number two, love.com. Eat to Live to Love, healing, weight loss, and fitness. And we're back with author and behavior change specialist, Brian Falchuk. Now we get into the part of the show I like to call Quick Success, where you, Brian, can inspire the successors to enhance their lives in the areas of knowledge, health, wealth, and spirituality. Brian, what are you currently doing to enhance your knowledge? I'm reading like crazy, as much as I possibly can, and it tends to be books on Buddhism, um, which is just expanding my mind in, in some really beautiful ways. So I'm reading a ton. What are you currently doing to enhance your health? Um... Tomorrow I'm having knee surgery, which I don't know if that's enhancing or detracting from my health, but mm-hmm. I'm, I'm sticking to being a vegan and I have some form of movement, you know, intense movement every day, probably not tomorrow, but, um, I make that a priority. I start my day on that path and I fuel myself to fuel my health every day. What are you currently doing to enhance your wealth? Uh, I am continuing to, um, do the best I can possibly do in my day job, which I'm very blessed to have an exceptional job. I'm a C-level executive at an insurance company and I love my work. So I continue to do that and, you know, we'll see how everything goes with the book one day. Maybe the story will be different, but, um, that's, that's what I'm doing is I'm giving it my all in my day job to try to help this great company I work for continue to thrive. What are you currently doing to enhance your spirituality? So it follows on from the knowledge piece around um, studying Buddhism as, and taking the time for meditation and deep thought and a spiritual connection coming out of that. So it comes full circle with your first question, but they're interrelated. Are there any modern technologies or apps that you use to help you achieve success? So I, um, you know, outside of social media marketing for the book, which is exhausting, but luckily there's some tools to help with that. Um, I'm a big fan of meditation. And so something I have used in the past, I'm not using it now because I'm further in my practice, but it's an app called Headspace. And I recommend that to a lot of people who are thinking about getting into meditation to help them with that. So Headspace is something I used throughout my marathon training. Big fan of it. Um, so you can check that out. And it's, it's free to start as well. What new thing, book, activity, technology, or skill are you really excited to learn and dive into? Um, oh, that's a really tough question because I've got like 17 books I'm waiting to read, and I'm just looking at the pile of them, and each one of them, I could say that. So that's a really tough call. I have that same problem, too. <laughs> yeah. I'm. Oh, man. I can't. I don't think I can answer you on that. There's too many options. I'm sorry. Brian, how can our listeners connect with you? You can find everything at doadaybook.com. So the book's called Do A Day, and it's a book. 
dot com. Hopefully that's an easy one to remember, but I've got all the social media links, links to Inc. Magazine. You can find out more about coaching and see if you want me to do a speaking engagement. Um, but people can find me. I'm really active in my personal account on Twitter. It's at new body, N E W B O D I. Um, cause that's, that's where I do all my ink magazine stuff too. So if you follow me at, at new body, you'll find everything, but just go over to do You can pick up the book. It's on Amazon and everywhere else too. Um, so yeah, you, I, I'm all over the place. Easy to find. Finally, Brian, what's your definition of success? I think if you're just, and it doesn't have to be something big, if you're just doing something you genuinely love at least once a day, you're successful. That'll carry you forward so much. Successors, I hope you've enjoyed my conversation with Brian Falchuk. Please check out more successful free content like this at the4pos.com as well as rate, review, and subscribe wherever you find podcasts. Thanks for listening and prepare for success. Thanks, Brian. Thanks, Antonio. If you want to do more, earn more, be more, and stay more motivated, visit Amazon.com right now for a copy of Indulge Your Affirmative Motivation Within, 25 Motivations of Personal Development and Life Success. Get it now at Amazon.com. Podcasters, want more listeners? Check out Promosharecast.com and join the community today. That's Promosharecast.com. Join today and get the first month free, and you'll also receive 50% off for a lifetime membership. Sign up today. Promosharecast.com.